Everybody is scared about cancer today because it's a very serious illness. Today I like to talk about how to prevent and treat cancer successfully. I'm Dr. Nimal Gamage. I'm a member of World Academy of Cosmetic Surgeons. I practice in Sri Lanka. I was in US for 25 years and now I come back to Sri Lanka about three years ago. And cancer as we all know has a very high death rate over the last five decades the cancer death rates only dropped about five percent whereas we were able to st uh, treat the heart disease more successfully and decrease the death rates for by about 64 percent and in 1900 that's about more than 100 years ago cancer was the sixth leading cause of death but today it has become the second leading cause of death in america there are some countries where it is the leading cause of death and the scientists are already forecasting that in about 10 years it will be the leading cause of death in the world. So what causes the cancer? When we talk about cancers, we talk about the toxins, smoking, animal foods and sugar intake. But I would like to tell you that the biggest cause of cancer is smoking and animal foods and sugar. These are the facts. Dairy and meat intake causes breast cancer. A woman in Kenya has 82 times less chance of getting a breast cancer compared to a woman in Cal California or USA. The reason? Because they don't take dairy food or meat. Now, you know, breast cancer is the biggest cancer in women. Whereas prostate cancer is the biggest cancer in men and tobacco intake is also one of the biggest reasons why people die from cancer and tobacco has 24 carcinogens but still our governments have not stopped tobacco usage prostate cancer like i said is the biggest cancer in men and this is caused by mostly by dairy and meat intake in 1978 38,000 people died from prostate cancer in the United States of America, whereas in Japan, only 18 people died during that year. Japan is not a small country. Japan has half the population of USA, so we would have expected about 19,000 deaths in Japan if Japan had the same incidence of prostate deaths as in USA. What was the reason why did the Japanese people not get the prostate cancer as much as US people. Main reason was that Japanese people did not take dairy and meat. It's not their genetics because we know when Japanese people move to US and start eating dairy foods and meat, they get the same amount of cancer like the Americans. <coughs> there was a landmark study which was done in several centers around the world which proved beyond doubt that dairy causes cancer. When rats were given a carcinogen called aflatoxin and they were given different kinds of food, when they were given milk protein, they developed cancer very quickly. Similarly, when they were given other animal proteins, they got cancer as well. But the plant proteins did not promote cancer, although they were given the same toxin. So that there are so many toxins in the environment and we were told that we take about 100 different toxins every day, unless we take dairy or meat or other animal foods, we will not grow cancers. And when the proteins were replaced with plant proteins such as beans, uh, dal and garbanzos, these animals did not develop any cancers. And we also know now high sugar intake is one of the biggest reasons why people get cancer. because. In US especially, people have increased the intake of sugar in soft drinks about 41%, fruit drinks about 35%. And in fact, it causes obesity. If you take one Coca-Cola can a day, you will gain about 15 pounds in a year. So, in 1900s, when the cancer was like sixth leading cause of death, people only ate vegetables and fruits. They didn't take much sugar. So total fructose intake was only 15 grams a day. Around World War II, this has gone up to about 24 grams daily. And in 1994, 
This amount has gone up to 54 grams daily, gone up more than three times over that century. Today, an adolescent or a school-going kid takes about 72 grams of fructose every day. And we know FDA or Food and Drug Administration does not help this situation. Fructose is generally regarded as safe by FDA because FDA does not regulate any chronic toxins. Obviously, they did not want to regulate even alcohol or tobacco, although they know they are poison. So, fructose is a chronic toxin and will never be regulated by the government. Fructose uh, is not like glucose. Glucose is our energy source. All our cells can take in uh, glucose, but fructose can only be taken by the liver because it's a toxin. And fructose does not increase insulin does not decrease insulin level if you take fructose. Fructose hurts liver and causes metabolic syndrome in the long run. So fructose causes obesity, type 2 diabetes, lipid problems, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. Similarly, fructose causes cancer. Anything which causes heart disease, decreases circulation, causes cancer. And when you take a load of fructose, your uric acid level goes up in the body and uric acid damages the production of nitric oxide in our endothelial cells which are very endothelial cells are the cells which cover all our blood vessels and that in time causes high blood pressure and all the other problems and also fact fructose easily becomes fat if you take a lot of sugar one third of fructose becomes fat right away and also fructose is known to increase the pattern B LDL. Pattern B LDL is the bad LDL that causes atherosclerosis. So, sugar intake leads to fatty liver, hepatitis, and all the other problems we mentioned before. And most people don't realize that cancers don't burn the glucose aerobically, it doesn't use oxygen at all. It can only use fermentation of glucose into lactic acid. We call it anaerobic metabolism, and that's how cancers grow. Wherever sugar is low, uh, wherever there is high amount of sugar and low amount of oxygen, that's where the cancer grows. And that's why anything which causes heart disease can cause cancer as well. So, we are better to avoid taking sugar, animal foods. In addition to that, it's good to avoid toxins in our environment and also in the diet. There's toxins like MSG in the diet which causes cancer. What is MSG? Which is monosodium glutamate and it's available when you eat food from restaurants and uh, we eat packaged foods. There's a lot of MSG in these places, even in like five-star hotels. When you eat food, a lot of that food has added MSG unless you specifically ask them. Also, we have sweeteners like aspartame and colorings, emulsifiers in our food. We had to avoid all these things. Then there's toxins at work. Governments usually do a good job to uh, check into these things. But as people, we should be aware that a lot of our industries may contain toxins. We know some viruses cause cancer. Hepatitis C virus, hepatitis B virus, human papillomavirus. These are very common can uh, viruses which do cause can cancers. And we have now hepatitis B vaccination and HPV, human papillomavirus vaccinations available to us and also sun, exposure to sun makes us old in the skin causing wrinkles and darkening of the skin as well as is the main cause of skin cancer and melanoma so we do recommend people not to go in the sun also x-rays have radiation we should be aware that if you keep doing mammograms for about 15 years you will increase our risk of getting a breast cancer by 50% and already breast cancer is happening to a lot of women. There's one in 13 women uh, in America end up with a breast cancer or actually are said to die from a breast cancer. So to prevent cancer, we should avoid all animal foods such as dairy especially and meat, also fish and eggs, avoid sugar in the diet, don't take any beverages like cola drinks or fruit drinks. Also avoid taking fruits which are high in fructose because fructose is a natural thing which is available from the plant foods but it is a poison 
and also avoid soy foods because soy foods contain a lot of phytate, manganese and phytoestrogens so the soy foods increase breast cancer and prostate cancer also don't take anything with omega-6 oil which are corn oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, canola oil and peanut oil they all increase the incidence of cancer only coconut oil is good for cooking and olive oil and flaxseed oil are good for salads you don't want to cook with these either because olive oil when cooked will become trans fat easily unlike coconut oil does not make trans fat easy because already is fully saturated we recommend doing a moderate amount of exercise daily to prevent cancer because a small amount of excesses will remove the toxins from our fat cells you can also do things like yoga, tai chi or martial arts and also daily meditation getting rid of the anger and grief in our mind helps us to decrease our stress hormone levels such as adrenaline and cortisol so that will decrease the incidence of cancer now we also have glutathione available to us glutathione is the master antioxidant of the body available in all our cells which removes the toxins which come into our cells and that's how the body fight cancer naturally now we can give glutathione as injection once a month to mainly to remove all the toxins from the body by doing a program of glutathione injections you can also remove chronic diseases such as high blood pressure diabetes cancer and also obtain a very nice skin color and it also helps you to have higher brain function and increase physical uh, capacity and over last 50 years we have collected a lot of evidence to show that glutathione actually helps people uh, prevent cancer we should learn to eat raw vegetables because cooked vegetables lose a lot of enzymes vitamins and antioxidants so by eating raw food we can enhance our immunity and decrease cancer for people who are interested in this we recommend taking a daily antioxidant program especially because we have so many toxins entering our body every day and these antioxidants can be taken by mouth or with injection to improve our chances melatonin is a special antioxidant which is produced by our brain and the level of melatonin goes down steadily after the age of 35 but melatonin is the strongest antioxidant which prevents breast and prostate cancer those are the commonest cancers in women and men resveratrol is a compound found in grapes or wine which also reduces the incidence of cancer as well as reduce heart disease all these things reduce heart disease as well as cancer and reduces the aging vitamin B12 should be taken once a month and vitamin D3 should be taken as a supplement and MSM as supplement to help us repair our DNA and in acetacetine as a supplement to increase the glutathione levels of the body we also recommend taking conjugated linoleic acid to prevent cancer most people think if they have a good insurance and they have access to a good hospital that they don't have to worry about diseases but we know that we can't depend on our medical system to help us live longer or prevent cancer because medical system is actually res responsible for killing a lot of people every year in America medical systems actually kill 210,000 people every year that's the third leading cause of death in USA today 80,000 of those people die from infections they get from hospitals and over 100,000 people die from side effects from medications which were actually prescribed by the doctors trying to help people and as we know most doctors don't have enough education on nutrition so if you go to a doctor to try to find out what to eat most of the time you might get wrong information which could be damaged into you in fact in America doctors are known to live much less than the regular people and if you look at medical schools out of 125 medical schools only 30 schools had a curriculum in nutrition an average doctor only learns about three hours of it, three hours on nutrition which is actually the most important thing to prevent cancers and other diseases and they spend hours and hours learning about medications and how to push pills for all kinds of ills 
which in turn actually kill most people. Chemotherapy, as we know, is the mainstay of our Western medical system for cancer, but they are only effective against three cancers, mainly testicular cancer, some lymphomas, Hodgkin lymphoma, as well as childhood leukemias, and they are thoroughly useless against many of the other cancers. Cancer surgery itself is not that helpful either, because when you surgically remove a cancer, you expedite the process of metastasis because you are breaking up the natural barriers. Also, when you, the person already had uh, the cancer spread to other areas of the body, we call this metastasis. By removing the primary cancer, you can increase the growth of the secondary cancers. Because the primary cancer is known to produce factors which decrease the new blood vessel growth in secondary cancer sites. Also, we recommend that nobody should touch or squeeze a cancer, such as when you go to hospital and hundreds of medical students come and examine your cancer. They can actually help spread that cancer, cancer by that pressure. Chemo and radiation therapy are the other mainstays of Western medical system, but these, both these treatments increase the risk of secondary cancers and both severely damage your immunity and your immunity is what fights the cancer and also it damages your body, damages your brain, most people end up getting memory loss and other brain diseases as a result of chemotherapy and radiation therapy and to prevent cancers we have to emphasize that fiber is one of the most important things in your diet and fiber is only found in plant foods you can't find any fibers in animal food when you take fiber it reduces the rate of absorption of carbohydrates you, you, so when you take fiber with your food your glucose will be absorbed very slowly and evenly it increases the intestinal transport and reduces your appetite and also some of the fiber will be converted to free fatty acids by the bacteria in the colon and these free fatty acids especially the short chain fatty acids are very helpful to suppress insulin level and we can never rely on the big pharmaceutical companies to help us because they are only driving chemotherapy which is a multi-billion dollar industry for them making a lot of money so they spend a lot of time and money educating doctors how to do chemotherapy and telling the government to make the other forms of treatments illegal but of course if you look at the research and the data we can see that the other forms of treatments can actually cure cancer at a much higher rate and the FDA will never approve any non-toxic drug herbal product vitamin or supplement as a treatment for anything because nobody can make any money out of those things when talk, talking about cancers we have to talk about liver cancer because there are 400 million people in China who have hepatitis B as a chronic infection and a lot of these people will end up getting liver cancer in the future and liver cancer will become a big cancer for the entire world and one of the biggest chemotherapy successes in the recent years was GEMSA but it, not, it only increased the survival of a patient by 1.5 one and a half months and so a drug company is now making billions of dollars by increasing the lifespan of a cancer patient with by one and a half months when you go to a doctor with a cancer your oncologist might say that your tumor is going to respond to this chemotherapy and you might think all right this chemotherapy is going to cure me but that's not what he means he only meant that your tumor will shrink about 50 percent in about four weeks and the data shows that people who got chemotherapy out of all the people who got chemotherapy only 2.1 percent actually lived beyond five years everybody else died but in 1930s and 1940s dr max gerson in the united states cured about 50 percent of the pa his patients with a program of vegetable juices fresh vegetables organic food and coffee enemas and this is a much better rate of cure than what we do today with our western medicine and also today 
we can use poly MVA which is alpha lipoic acid with palladium containing other multivitamins to treat advanced brain cancer and get a 35-40% cure rate whereas conventional medicine is only treating and curing only about 2% of the people salicinium or Chinese aspirin has also been given intravenous and orally and stage 4 prostate cancers get a response about 85% 85% cure rate on this program similarly Iscado is an extract from the mistletoe plant which is injectable to obtain a 70% cure rate in prostate cancer. When you talk about cancer, it's very important that no cancer patient would should eat any kind of sugars, especially avoid drinks with sugar, because sugar is important important Sugar is very important for cancers to grow. Cancers don't grow without glucose. And also we need to make sure that we alkalinize our body. So we shouldn't eat any kind of meat, dairy. We should alkalinize our body with a lot of raw vegetables, especially with wheat grass, algae or rye grass. And vitamin C, if given at a very high dose, like 50 grams daily, intravenously, will help to kill a lot of cancer cells. Vitamin K orally and vitamin D3 are also helpful to boost our immunity when you are trying to fight cancers.